Welcome to the Center for Deployment Psychology's Virtual Education Center in Second Life. We're glad you've joined us today for this workshop. I'm Dr. Kevin Holloway, Director of Training and Education here at CDP. Before our workshop begins, I want to briefly orient you to some of the tech features here that will help you make the most of your training experience. You should know that to receive continuing education credits, you must attend the entire workshop and complete the post-test and evaluation at the end. Attendance is taken automatically here at the Virtual Education Center, so there is no need to sign in and sign out. Just make sure that you're here for the entire workshop. Unfortunately, partial credit is not available. Handouts for today's workshop can be downloaded by clicking the Handouts Pad Folios at the Registration Desk, or by clicking on the Handouts sign at the front of the auditorium. We'll also put a link for the handouts in the chat window. All handouts for the entire workshop are available for you to download now. If for some reason you are unable to access the handouts download site, please say so in the chat window now so that our tech support team can send you an email with the handouts files attached. We will be referencing the handouts throughout the workshop, so please make sure to download them now if you haven't already. You are welcome to print the handout so that you have a hard copy, but that's not required to participate in the workshop today. Speaking of tech support, you can identify our tech support team members by the blue circles floating over their heads. If you have a tech support problem at any time throughout the workshop, you can ask for their assistance by clicking on the blue circle. Alternatively, you can click the Tech Help button on the Heads Up display, or HUD, more on the HUD in a moment, or by typing your question in the chat window. Some of you have already discovered the chat or conversations window, and that's great. We'll use the chat window throughout the workshop as the primary means of communication between attendees and instructors. Click on the chat button on the bottom center of your screen to toggle the chat window open and closed. We recommend that you keep this window open throughout the workshop so that you can watch the ongoing chat, scroll up to previous questions and answers, and so forth. For some of you, the chat window is positioned on the bottom right corner of your screen, but it covers up the HUD there. Just drag and drop this window to the bottom left corner of your screen by clicking and holding on the title bar of the window while you drag it to its new position and release. Now you can see the chat and the HUD at the same time. We invite you to interact through the chat window at any time throughout the workshop to ask questions, respond to questions, discuss with other participants, react to what you're hearing, and ask for tech support as needed. We encourage ongoing discussion and interaction in the chat, or what we refer to as synergistic learning. Just be sure to keep comments in the conversations window on topic. We have two instructors for this workshop so that while one is actively presenting, the other will be monitoring the chat, responding to questions, inviting more participation, and watching for questions or comments that should be raised to a larger voice discussion. Your questions and comments will be seen. As mentioned, our instructors will likely ask many different questions of you during their presentation. Feel free to respond directly in the chat window. Some of these questions will be simple yes or no questions. The instructor will indicate this by saying, slap me some whys. This is just shorthand for asking you to type a quick Y or N in the chat as a response. So let's practice. If you understand what I mean by saying, slap me some Ys, then slap me some Ys. Hopefully the chat window is filling up with Ys right now. As mentioned, the chat window will be our primary means of communication throughout the workshop. However, you will use your microphone for a voice discussion at certain times during the workshop, such as during breakout role play exercises or during designated question and answer periods. To toggle your microphone on and off, click the Speak button on the bottom center of your screen. Alternatively, you can click the center scroll wheel button on your mouse to turn your mic on and off. You will know your mic is on or open if the button is green and appears to be pushed in. It is off or closed if the Speak button is grayed out and not pushed in. We ask that you please leave your microphone off or muted throughout the entire workshop, except for during breakout exercises or when the instructors invite you to open your mic. Otherwise, the combination of the background noise from all of our participants can be very distracting. Hello? Now, everyone has accidentally left their microphone open at one time or another, and that's understandable. Just know that if we notice someone's mic open when it needs to be muted, we'll politely remind you in chat by saying something like, hot mic. If you see this, please check to see that your mic is muted. The Heads Up display, or HUD, is located on the bottom right corner of your screen. Everyone should have received the HUD automatically on sign-in, 
If you don't see the HUD on your screen, it is possible that you did not accept the Experience Tools invitation when you first arrived at the Education Center. That's okay. Just notify one of our tech support team that you need assistance getting the HUD after this video is over. The HUD is an integral part of your experience at the Education Center, so please be sure that you have it. There are a number of functions on the HUD to facilitate your learning. Along the bottom, you'll see a number of camera angle buttons. Each of these changes your point of view to a few predetermined angles. The second from the left focuses in on the podium. The next on the media boards at the front of the auditorium. And the next two show wide angles of the audience from front and back of the room, respectively. The button on the far left is the reset button and will return your camera angle or point of view to the default position. You can also zoom in on specific features or tools in the auditorium simply by clicking on them. For example, by clicking in the center of the slide viewer, your camera angle will zoom in on the slides. Clicking on the video screen on the right will zoom in on the video screen. You can even zoom in on the countdown clock or the event information board by clicking on them. You can return to the default camera position by hitting the escape key on your keyboard. The gestures button on the HUD reveals several pre-programmed animations for your avatar. You can use these to give us nonverbal feedback anytime throughout the workshop. Just click on the animation you want and watch your avatar respond. Notice that some of the gestures have a smaller tag hanging off of the bottom. These are variations of that animation available to you. For example, to lower your hand after raising it, you need to click on the lower tag hanging below the hand animation on the ribbon. You can close the animation ribbon by clicking the gestures button again. The vote button will sometimes be used for audience polling. When the polling system is activated, the vote button will turn blue as seen here. When the button is blue, click on the vote button and respond to the question presented to you in the dialog box in the upper right corner of your screen. Responses can be tabulated and displayed for everyone to see. However, it is sometimes easier to just ask the audience to type answers to questions in the chat, so we may not use this feature much in this workshop. Similarly, the Q&A button on the HUD is to use the Q&A system here in the auditorium. When that system is active, the Q&A button will turn blue. Click the Q&A button and type your question into the dialog box at the top right corner of your screen. Your name will be added to the list of attendees with questions in the order received. The instructors can use this list to organize the Q&A portion of the workshop. However, again, we found that it is sometimes easier to just ask anyone who has a question during the Q&A to type their name in the chat window so we know you have a question and we know the order in which to call on people. So we may not use this system much either. If you find that a speaker's voice volume is too quiet or too loud for you, you can adjust the speaker's volume to your liking. Simply hover your mouse cursor over their avatar, and when their nameplate pops up, click the green circle with an eye on it to open the information window. At the bottom of this window, you'll find a volume slider bar. Slide it to the right to increase their volume. Slide it to the left to decrease. Adjustments that you make to any speaker's volume this way only affects you and your machine. So don't worry about changing volumes for other people. Set it to a level that's comfortable for you. We're almost done. Let's set a couple of preferences now that will help you in the workshop. First, open the Preferences window either by clicking the Me drop-down menu in the upper left corner of your screen and selecting Preferences about three-quarters of the way down, or by typing Control-P or Command-P on a Mac. On the General tab, first click the radio button to turn name tags off. That will turn off all of the floating name tags over all other attendees and clean up your visual space and allow you to see the learning materials more clearly. Next, click on the Away Timeout drop-down menu and select Never. This will prevent your avatar from slumping over as if going to sleep if you haven't moved your mouse recently and will help our instructors not worry that you've checked out. Don't click on OK yet. Now, click on the Chat tab in the left menu of the Preferences window. On this tab, uncheck the box next to Play Typing Animation When Chatting. This will prevent the typewriter sound from playing every time someone posts in the chat window, which again can get pretty distracting with so much participation from the audience. Now, go ahead and click OK in the Preferences window to close this window. A quick word about videos in the Virtual Education Center. Most people will be able to view demonstration videos on the video screen on the right at the front of the auditorium. The volume of any accompanying audio will be determined by how close your point of view camera angle is to the screen. 
so make sure to zoom in by clicking on the screen before the video starts. When the video is over, just hit the escape key on your keyboard to zoom out again. Some people will have problems with videos on the video screen due to the flash drivers on their specific computer. If you're able, we recommend updating the flash drivers on your computer in order to view videos. Instructions are available by clicking the Trouble Viewing Videos sign. But please do this during one of the breaks since doing so requires you to exit out of Second Life and log back in. If you aren't able to update your flash drivers, no worries. We'll always post an alternative URL link in the chat window that you can click and open the video in an external web browser to view at the same time as everyone else. At the conclusion of the video, just close the browser window to return to Second Life. Please note that these external links are to YouTube. We use YouTube for convenience for our workshop participants. However, these videos are set to private in YouTube because we have no intention to distribute the videos we use. Please respect this by not creating or modifying any YouTube playlist to include these videos. And finally, it is possible, but very unlikely, that we might experience an unscheduled rolling restart of our Second Life Island. If this happens, you'll see a notification appear on your screen with a loud gong sound, shaking visuals, and a countdown clock. No worries, should this happen, we'll all log out of Second Life and take a brief break while the restart completes, usually no longer than 5 to 10 minutes. Then we'll all re-log in to the Education Center and resume the workshop. Thank you all again for joining us today, and have a great training workshop.